Holy crazy people. Okay, where did I go there? Oh, there I am. All right. Woo. Okay, I didn't know what happened to me there for a second. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the Arthur's Quill. Not sure what exactly happened there right there at the last moment. And, uh, I, got, um, I got a new camera this week, and it, for some reason, it's it's a little jitsy when I move around, so it may have to go into a different computer. It's, uh, hey, what can you do on your live radio? Yes, we have this lovely lady with us, and we're going to talk to her in just a minute. So and I'm getting questions already. Who's this? Who's this? And yeah, I know y'all can read. Look, see the screen going by. <laughs> who it is but just in case you can't figure it out we're going to get there into just a second a couple of quick things um one more week i'm hosting the show and then you'll start seeing well after christmas you'll you'll start seeing different hosts on, on the show uh john Gibbs is going to be one of the hosts jeffrey pritchard's going to be one of the hosts uh it's looking like jay mcdonald's is going to be one of the hosts uh we got a couple of females that looks like they're going to be coming in all together we're trying to get eight hosts so that the show is just rotating because uh, there's going to be a lot of guests coming through here. There's going to be a lot of the winners from Writers of the Future coming through. There's going to be a lot of people coming in because, uh, you know, we do a lot of authors on the network. Um, you know, everybody, oh, shit, we got five authors on the network already. So, uh, and they all have friends and they have friends. And then a lot of people we interview are authors who are selling their books or bringing their books on board. So there's just a lot. So we decided to have a show just for that. Uh, that way... You know, when, when something's good's going on or, or stuff like the winners of writers of the future coming out or later on, um, I think I think February, either the end of January, beginning of February, we'll start having the winners from this year's writers of the future uh, will be joining us on this show. So y'all get to see them ahead of time uh, before we all get out to um, Los Angeles in April. Anyway, tonight's guest is Barbara Lund. She's she's a very nice lady. Uh, she, she, you know she is because she came on the show and she knows I'm, my, my scary butt is here and going to torture her the entire time. Barbara, how are you? You look you look happy. You're smiling. It's always good to see a smile. It's good to see you, Joe. How's it going? <laughs> we, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Joe, Joe's, Joe's, been, Joe's been ripping and tearing and, and just tearing more and more up. It seems like uh, the end of this year and coming into this next year just seems like one of those years is that the squeaky wheel just needs to get oiled. So um, I, I, I just I, I catch myself getting involved in stuff sometimes that I really don't have no business getting involved in. It doesn't really reflect on me, but sometimes when I see the underdog, I can't help myself because I've been the underdog more than once. So I'm kind of like, no, we can't have this. Oh. Uh, no, she's an author, Jimmy. Did, did did I say anything about any anything about illustrators or anything like that? Well, she could be an illustrator and, and you know hiding and, and cloak. There we go, in cloak. Uh, by the way, we're going to be giving away a lightsaber on here, and it's going to have something to do with something I did just a few minutes ago, but I'm not going to tell y'all yet. Um, so, I mean, how's it going? I mean, career going, people bugging you. You having you had good 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 writing coming out. I mean, it's flowing out like it's supposed to. I always like to ask writers that because I know how it can be. I, I've talked to a lot of y'all over the years, and, and sometimes it's like, no, Joe, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got I managed about five hundred words today, so that's better than that's good. yesterday's zero. So <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's good. You know, it, it's funny because you know Emily drove me crazy to start writing something. So I'm writing about this eleven day experience and. You know, and, and if it wouldn't be for people like you and writers of the futures and all the judges, there's not a prayer in hell I could have got even two words on that page. So I'm just not even going to lie about it. So, you know, the last two years I went out there, I've got about 12,000, 13,000 words uh, nice. each time. And right now I'm sitting at 65,000. But it, it's like a thing for me. I, I can go weeks and then all of a sudden, two o'clock in the morning, oh shit. And by the way, guys, I'm a lousy typist, so there's a lot of shit, damn, shit, damn, oh, man, come on. And I have to see, like, where she can read, like, one time, I have to read, like, six. So it's, it's a different thing. But uh, really, you know, I have nothing but respect for authors. After after just trying to write anything, I'm like, Jesus, oh, Christ, how did I do this? Uh, people tell me, well, Joe, you're going to radio. I could never do that. That's, shit, that's easy <laughs> compared to what y'all do. That is easy. Oh, man. So, uh, what, wait, wait, what, what book were you... 37? 37, yep. 37. Okay, I think, wait. We got all these damn Christmas decorations back here, so we're going to have to get through them here. Let's see. Do we have 37? Oh, wait, I think that's I think that's 37. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think we got 37. Look at that. By the way, guys, we are selling this 
box set behind. Well, this is giving away for Christmas. Uh, box set. So what did I do? I'm trying to kick everybody off the screen here. Okay. No leave. Yes. No cancel. All right. That was just weird. That took over my screen. So this is the book she's in. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. So she was part of the COVID group. That's why yes. I remember you because you're part of the COVID group. And uh, cause I don't remember everybody. I remember a lot of them, but not everybody. So this, this, this was a good group of people. Now, Okay, first off, it was two groups of people in all fairness. But so my first year I ever met any of these people, there was 48. <laughs> it was insane, man. But y'all were, y'all are good. And there's a good group of authors there. There's a good group of illustrators. There. Everybody was a lot of fun. Maybe because the group was so large, but, or maybe it's because we were all finally out of, you know, COVID restriction. Everybody was just happy to be out. But yes. it, was, it, was a, it was a very good group. Oh, I forgot who did the artwork on this one. Um, I know Dave edited it. I forgot. I'd have to look it up. Did Echo? The, I think Echo might have. It might have been Echo. Um, she's amazing. Yeah, Echo Turning is amazing. And, and she's a lot of fun to hang out with, too, by the way. Um, I've got to hang out with her a couple of years. Actually, I met her husband. Um, so I knew her for two years. And then I met... Uh, well, we'll just use his, his pen name, Lazarus Black. And um, I met is it, is it the guy from anyway. We're not going to go there. Um, I met him. Uh, he was there. He was a winner. Um, he, was, he was there as a winner. And then he was there as a judge one year. And it was just kind of strange at first. And then I realized somebody had told me, oh, well, no, that's that's Echo's husband. I'm like, Echo, why you meet, you know, introduce us to your home? <laughs> She's like, ah, man. No. I mean, they get along real good, and uh, the whole bunch of them are really nice people. And yeah. if you if you're lucky enough to get her as a as a teacher or a judge, I mean, really, I mean, as a as a instructor, you're gonna. I mean, she knows a lot of stuff, guys. And plus, she's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I don't. She don't take no bullshit though. No, uh -uh. and I torture the hell out of her when I see her. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, is somebody paying you to torture me? I said, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, um, I've been real fortunate to hang out with her and Tom Woods and have cocktails. We'll say and leave it at that. And uh, no, they're nice people. You'd be surprised how many of these people, even though some of them are quite wealthy, are just every day. You know, let me put my pants on one leg at a time. So, who was your favorite judge? I mean, who not your favorite judge? Who was your favorite teacher there? I know mean, Tim's good, uh, and and I know um, oh, what's her name? What's her name? Oh, I can't, uh, Jody. Jody's, Jody's good. Awesome. Jody, yeah, Jody's good. And mm, see, there's yeah, so many of them. It's tough. Yeah, see, yeah. It's, it's tough. So many really, really wonderful people. They uh, they really do have a bunch of good staff there. And there are a lot. Of, what I like about them, too, is they're fun. So they're not mm -hmm. just, it's not just let me beat you in the head and teach you something, which basically is what they're doing because it's it's such a, you know, whirlwind thing. Um but they're enjoying themselves while they're doing it. And because they're enjoying themselves, everybody else is enjoying themselves. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of fun. What do you mean, Denise? Uh, no, you mean, can you get invited? Well, actually you can. Um, you have to be associated with them somewhere or be like famous or a winner <laughs> or a winner's family. Other than that, you can't get invited. I'm just being honest. That's the only way you can get invited. Can I get you invited? No. Can you come as my assistant? No. No. Well, no, me, that has nothing to do with right as a future. That had more to do with the, uh, the boss lady would be like, no. <laughs> so <laughs> that's not going to happen. So, Barbara, what you, I mean, what have you been doing? I mean, so it's been like three years now, two, three years. Uh, you've mm -hmm. been having some fun, relaxing. No relaxing. <laughs> no, no relaxing. Well, and this, and, and then, you know, I hate to even ask that question anymore because really there hasn't, since COVID, it doesn't really seem to have been like that break where you can just kind of exhale and just for a while, it, it's, it just doesn't seem like that. And I know a lot of people and I know a lot of rich people and even they're like holding on to their money tight right now. So, and then there's other stuff, just people just seem to be ornery, cranky, yes. pissy. And they've been like this for at least a year now. And it's, it's, you know, I go places and I'm usually happy, go lucky and, you know, like a dumbass. And uh, I'll go places and people are like, just snappy. I'm like, why are you so damn snappy? Oh, you know, Joe, like, oh, yeah, well, life's going to suck. I mean, that's part of living. I said, unfortunately, there are the sucky times in life. And, and trust me, I've been through those too. 
I said, but man, you got to have, you know, you got to smile once in a while, crack a joke. Even even sci-fi, when they're ripping the guy's head off, the other guy's cracking a joke. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> you got you, you to gotta at least sometimes laugh. Uh, so, so wait, wait, wait. So you've been releasing stuff? Yeah. Said, so I've been, I have a, a day job, right? But I've been yes. releasing about a book a year and trying to get some short stories in between there as well. Well, see, that's, that's, see, that's working. See, I, I don't understand. So, see, to me, you're a normal writer. When I hear people like Dean Wesley or my friend um, Nick Redfern, who writes nine to five and has like 140 books, I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, how do y'all do this? I mean, you know, oh, I'm going in. I mean, I mean, it's like a switch. I, I couldn't do that. I, matter of fact, almost everybody I've interviewed tells me they can't do that. Well, I have to pay the bills first, and yeah, unfortunately, right now, Dana. Yes. <laughs> yeah, somebody asked me just yesterday. I was, I was on a show in New York, and a guy asked me. He says, "Well, why don't you do this full time?" I said, "Because I have a lot of bills." And I said, "You know what? I hate to say this, but my construction company pays for those, and the station hasn't gotten there yet." I was like, "It's just how you know. It's it's life." Yeah. Um, what is that, Christopher? She she is. She's very nice. She's very funny, actually. Um, we had several conversations when she was in. Uh, well, I torture everybody. It's, it's like it's God put me on. So you know, you hear people say it's my karma. You, well, you know what my karma is to drive people batshit crazy. <laughs> that is my karma. Yes, it is. Some people are here to learn. Some people are here to teach. I'm sorry. I just happen to be one of the other ones. Nice. Mm. But well, of course, Christopher, <laughs> teachers can learn lessons too. I don't know. <laughs> But it's true. I tell this to people all the time. They're like, I don't know why you like that. I said, because God said, get down there and torture you bastards. And that's what I'm doing. Well, I want to make sure I, I get to the, the bright, shiny place. I don't want to go to the pitchfork place. No. <laughs> Not unless they've installed some air conditioning. Then we can talk. Yeah. Anyways, let's get back to what we were talking about. So, I mean, what, what genre are you writing in? Science fiction and fantasy. Oh, see, I, I love you already. You see, you're right. already on my good people's list. <laughs> Because I, I catch a lot of flack on here because we get, you know, we get a lot of steampunk. We get a lot of everything, actually, in all fairness. But, you know, most people don't realize, to me, sci-fi is just like a buttload of genres with what I call real sci-fi kind of tucked somewhere in the middle. Yes. And I get, I get in trouble for that real sci-fi stuff, too, by the way. But to <laughs> me, it is. It's it's like there's sci-fi and then there's all these little avenues of sci-fi going along. I do kind of like the sci-fi that's put sometimes in near future, like 100 200, 300 years. So for some reason, I do have a, a, a drawing for those. But still, I also like the sci-fi that's like 50,000 years in the future. And hey, look what we can do. <laughs> I kind of yeah. like those too. I'm not sure. You know, I think because of some of the shows I grew up on, like Babylon 5 and stuff like that, um, they were what I would call near now sci-fi, you know, within uh, 100 mm -hmm. years or 200 years of where we are today. So it makes a difference. What, what Pete? You've never heard had a you've never heard of Babylon Five. Look it up. It's it's a what would you call it? A sci-fi soap opera is what I'd call it. Yes, that's 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 what it is. It's basically a sci-fi soap opera. Yeah, check it. It's a lot of fun to watch. You got some good characters in it. You got some stupid characters in it. Mm -hmm, it's good sci-fi. Uh, it was written by some guy. I forget his name now. He read it all. I think all at one time, all five years at one time. And he wrote five movies to go along with it. I said, Look, some people can do that. We were just talking about that. How the hell you do that kind of stuff? Uh, you know, I mean, even even if God struck me in the head with some said, okay, here, you got a whole novel in your head, it would still probably take me six months to bang it out on paper. Well, because I can't. Well, first off, I, oh, I can type on a cell phone like that, but I can no. You mean really type on a computer and be grammar correct and, and write? No, no, it's not going to happen. I actually, I threaten Emily all the time. Emily, John, a good one. I tell her all the time. I said, when I'm finished this, this 140,000 monstrosity thing, it's going to be, I said, I'm sending it to you to edit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That'll be good. Next time she sees me, she'll probably beat me in the head with it. Um, <laughs> no, she, anyway, no people. I'm just kidding. She, she's a sweetheart. Oh no, we're giving away. Um, not Kylo Ren. We're giving away a uh, Qui-Gon Jinn's lightsaber tonight. Yes. A little while I'll pull up a picture of it so y'all can see it. Yeah. It's Qui-Gon Jinn's lightsaber we're giving away tonight. Uh, last time I checked, if you tried to buy it, it was around $800. Mm -hmm. And I do have two 
right as the future book 36 is and one and look at that 137 over there so since barbara's here tonight we'll give away a 37 and a 36 i'm actually running out i i got some books coming in from barnes and nobles and from a couple other places but uh because we give away a lot of books um we're gonna oh Oh, you can't see it. There's a book up here called Non-Human. Well, the original the uh, author is a friend of mine, and um, he sent me the original copy. I don't give away autographed copies. Sorry, guys. Those are mine. But he did send me two additional ones. Or actually, you know, I think the guy who works for him sent me two additional ones. So we're going to give them away this week, too. Not quite seasonal books. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was for the season, people. Come on now. It's non-terrestrial. We'll just leave it at that, and, and y'all can figure out what the hell that means. So you, you're writing sci-fi. So what what kind of sci-fi are we talking? I mean, I don't want you to get a book away, but uh, I mean, you can plug them all you want. Feel free. Anything you've got ready to sell or put out there, plug away. Anything you want people to just go look at, feel free to plug away because this is going to get repeated a lot in the future. So because we do, this is this is one of the lucky shows that gets features on Google advertisement with us. So. Nice. Um, yeah, so it, it, it'll eventually get quite a few few people looking at it. So many, you know, anything you want to plug, plug away. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? Why? Thank okay, you. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna start putting a find on on anybody. People ask me these questions. <laughs> I always get somebody's gonna always ask. Oh, there we go. That oh, one is cops in space. It's called Platform Eight. See, she just wants story. to scare me. It's is it scary? scary. Oh, okay. nah. well, because when you first had it up, it looked like something was trying to grab, I guess, because of the way it came through on my screen. Maybe I should <laughs> just put it on a bigger screen. Yeah. Well, no, Jack, um, y'all can rewatch if you're watching this and, and you're not watching this on Roku television, you can rewatch it on Roku television. And next week sometime we're going to be on Prime. Uh, yeah, you know, Prime, you know, Prime TV, Amazon Prime. Yeah, we're going to be in Prime. Yes, we're going to Prime. I told y'all in the beginning when we got Roku, we was going to Prime. It was just a matter of time. <clears throat> so we're going to be on Prime, and y'all can come to us on Prime. Uh-oh. That's my is, new one. Is this like sexy alien or something? What the hell is this? This is not sci-fi. This is fantasy. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> fantasy is different. And see, I can get into some fantasies, too. There you go. Okay. I got all sorts, so, so those are my two two newest. Get, get, out, get out there. Go check out our books, people. Yes, it's Christmas time. You, you got presents. Yeah. I, I always tell people books are great presents and they're the kind of presents that can get used a lot. And then when you're finally tired of them, give them to your grandkid or your niece or your nephew or your friend. No, really. Absolutely. Um, what are you talking about, Michael? <laughs> not everybody does hard copies. I know. I know. And, but not everybody does hard, because it's a pain in the ass to start off with. And hard copies are expensive. They're always going to be at least double what the paperback is. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Well, why well, get hard copies? Because I do a lot of press work for people. No, I don't buy them. They give them to me. Um, yes, no, I, because I do press work for people. It's a gift, just part of my life. See, real quick, when I want to go off track, but real quick, after Katrina, I lost about, we had about 2,200 books, 2,300 books. We used to have a, a lending library in our house. And um, we Katrina came, and the bitch part was, the water never got deep in my house, not more than six inches. But there was so much moisture that all the books just swell apart. Now they were ruined. There was nothing we could do with them. I mean, a book that was this big was now like this. I mean, it was, it was, ins- they swell apart so much. They blew the sides off the shelves. Yes. It was insane. Um, it was, no, it was sad, man. I mean, I, the, first off, half those books were autographed books by people I've either worked with or were in different fields with, or, or people who are, were related or hooked up with us somewhere or another or through somebody we knew. Um, I mean, Monsignor Balducci's autograph was on there. I mean, he was a, he, you know, he worked directly for the Vatican. I had the the um, astronomer of, of the Vatican on there. I had two cardinals. So there, there and there was a lot of I had quite a few politicians. I, uh, Colonel, I mean, not Colonel McDonald on <laughs> Senator McDonald's autograph uh, because of a favor I did for him. And it was a very interesting inscription. So I actually cut the cover off a couple of them and kept them. But other than that, the books were gone. And it's just oh. sad, man. It's oh, just sad, you know, because it, they, what do you mean? They, yeah, they probably would have been worth money sometime, but I, it's not really that. My family would just keep they just would stuff like this in our families get handed out. We got a, we got a story book. It's a hard story book, but it's funny because it's got every, every nursery rhyme story in it, you know, from, I mean, no, everyone, I'm serious. If it's, if it's a, nur- a real nursery rhyme, it's not from Hans Christian Anderson. It's in this book. And, um, it's about yay thick and it's a hardcover, but it's been in the family so long that for years they were just using clear scotch tape to just keep it <laughs> the top of it together. 
No, it's still in the family. I gave it to my sister. Well, because um, she's got a daughter who just had a daughter. My son is married, but he doesn't have any kids, so I gave it to her. I have no idea what it's worth. I, it um, it was appraised one time somewhere around fourteen thousand dollars. It's uh, we were all like, "What? We thought it was gonna be like fourteen dollars." I didn't. You should have seen this thing. Come on, I, I, even I, I looked at the guy like, "Yeah, sure, dude. What are you smoking back there?" Mm. Um. So you you, you got to get out there and do some book signings, make you know, you know. Well, wait, wait. Okay, what part of the country you're in? I was going to ask you where you live. That was a bad question. So, what part of the country are you in? I'm in Utah. So, I did some book signings, oh, uh, yeah. Fan X, which was a lot of fun. Yes, Fan X is. I went a year before last. It's uh, Fan X is a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, Fan X is the uh, your boy puts it on up there. He does four actually conferences. He does Fan X one in Tampa, and I forgot the other two, but um. Phoenix is a lot of fun. It's it's mm-hmm. it's it's like Dragon Con, just a little downsized, but it's like Dragon Con. It's growing every year. And Utah's actually a cool state. And I'll tell y'all something a little secret about Utah. Utah has four of the ten dark sky parks in it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm Jimmy. I, I, so I was in Mohab year before last. Mohab is a weird place. It, it, first off, you, if you're gonna stay in Mohab for any length of time, you better be in good shape. <laughs> Just telling you, man. Then people are nonstop hiking, jumping. No, there's there's not a dark sky park there, but there is a couple of parks there that it can be close to dark sky parks. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately, Mohab puts off light, so they're not going to be in the dark sky registry. But um, there are a few. There's right. one in Texas. Oh, yes, and, yes. and it's uh, um Rice's and uh, not Cedar Breaks, but there. Yeah, there's several down south. Yeah, it's it's yeah it's it's weird because I know we had um we had gone I was I was doing a lecture somewhere somewhere in Springs Utah hell somewhere not quite in the middle of the state but about a, about a third of the way up the state and I think we were two hours or maybe three hours from Vegas and um and partner said let's go down to Area Fifty One I'm like sure we'll go, we'll take a drive down there right so we cruise down to Area Fifty One and we go to all these little ghost towns and shit. He's taking us all over the place because Nathan's from there. So he actually knows where it's going. We're just along for the ride or for the drive. So we get down there. We get to Area 51. You know, they're watching us. And Area 51 is always fun because anytime you're there, when you walk this way, the camera goes that way. When you walk this way, the camera goes that way. <laughs> you're just, and you're like five of us. I'm like, how are you watching all five of us? And they get binoculars and uh, monoculars on the damn cameras now. But it's it's funny. And you know, as soon as the damn thing hits your face, it comes up such and such, such and such, such. And he knows where you live. And they're like, what is this moron doing out here? <laughs> it's, it's pro- they probably have fun with it, to be honest, which are the guys that work in the tower. But um, on the way back, we just stop in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's like literally, this is nowhere Utah people. There is nothing in any direction for at least a hundred miles. Nothing. It even tells you when you go to get you, you we stopped at a convenience store to get something to eat, and it says no next gas station, 140 miles. You're like, <laughs> wow, really? I go outside, look at the tank. Okay, we're good. We're full tank, we're good to go. But it's, people, there's long stretches out there, and there's lots of signs. Don't you know, beware of bull. It's funny. Driving through New Mexico and even in Colorado, it was like, beware of the cows, beware of cows. You freaking hit Utah's, beware of the bulls. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> it's, and then Nevada was the same way. It wasn't in the southern part of both states, in the southern part of the states, but it was funny as hell. And But because it's such long stretches, I mean, a lot of places it's 80, 85. You can just cruise. Mm-hmm. And, um, Matter of fact, we went place at 75. We were doing 100. We blew by the cop. He didn't pay attention to us. I thought for sure we was getting a ticket. He didn't even look. He was like, whatever. Because we probably weren't even going fast for him. He probably looked at him guys doing 120 or something, 40. Oh, it's a, no, people. I'm telling y'all, you think nothing is close to anything down there. But <laughs> when you're sitting out there in the middle of the night, we were out there. I uh, parked off in this little niche thing on the side of the road, and the coyotes are whooping. And it's it's pitch black except for one little tiny dot of white light way off to uh well probably where we were standing it was probably like southwest and it was Las Vegas and every now and then you see a tiny little you see a stream of little tiny white dots over the top of us and you know there were airplanes going to Las Vegas but other than that it was pitch ass black um, the skies were beautiful you could actually make it out the Milky Way quite nicely it's a beautiful place Utah's a beautiful state. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but last time they had a Mormons freaked me out. So <laughs> I'm just saying, no people beware where you stay is all I can tell you. <laughs> I'm being honest with y'all. Y'all think I'm playing. See, she knows because yeah. she's from there. I questions where you stayed. <laughs> No, they weren't there. They were mean or anything. Well, who said that? No, no, no. It wasn't. It wasn't like that. No, it was just weird. That's all. I can't remember. We. Um, I went there. Lectured there twice. It's up in the mountains. Well, the, where we went and lectured was up in the mountains. They they set up a big outdoor screen, and it was beautiful out there. It was like being in Red Locks, Colorado. I mean, it was just beautiful. Park and, City, maybe or. Uh, I know. I want to say it was Springs, but I, I, I might be getting confused with Arkansas because I was just up there speaking. So, uh, I don't know. Who knows? Well, she lives there. She she actually lives in the state, and the, and the weather is not quite as a horrible as it's put out to be. Um, I mean, I don't get me wrong. Y'all get some nasty weather in the winter time. Let's not even lie about it. But um, overall, like in the summer, I found most of the places to be quite comfortable. Uh, of course, I'm from Louisiana, so anything above Texas feels comfortable to me. But uh, it, it was it was it was nice up there, and uh, the evenings were always nice. Mm -hmm. um, it was nice. And the people, everybody I met was super friendly. Even when they found out I was looking at aliens, they were like, oh, I'm sure a couple of were like, <laughs> <laughs> but when we stayed at the Mormon hotel, somebody had given me a picture, like one of those stop signs with an alien's face on it. I had just stuck it in the front window. Matter of fact, I forgot it there when I left. It was, you know, just, it was up against the window. So when you walk by, you would see it. <laughs> Every time you'd see one of those the girls go by, they would look like, what is that? What is it? It, it? I don't know. For every no, they all got them. They're all dressed up in the Mormon garb. That's why I called it the Mormon hotel. And uh, but every time they seen that alien, they were like, "What the shit is that?" <laughs> I'm sure they were cursing. No, nah, they were really nice. They probably didn't want to come in the room. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were there for seven days. We had a good time. Uh, no, you can't ask that question. Uh, oh, a website? Well, you got a website they can go visit? Yeah, it's barbaralandas.com. Super easy. So Stephanie's asking, when did you, when, okay, hold on. Let me get this correctly. Let me read this correctly. So she, first she's asking, how old were you when you really decided that you thought you could, or when you decided you wanted to write and how old were you when you realized you could actually write? Did I get that right, Stephanie? Okay. Nice. Uh, I was, I wrote in high school and I decided I wanted to write in high oh, school. That was like two years ago. Shit. Right. Yes. Really close. And then I went, I wrote a little bit in college and then I decided to, I like eating. I like food and to pay for a house and things. And so I did not write <laughs> for a long time. So I picked it up again uh, just after, I, right when I was turning 40. So it's been 40, a couple lie. You're not 40 years old. You bullshit, I'm 50. Man. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. I'm not believing this bullshit. <laughs> I know, Jimmy. I mean, me, me and Jimmy both say, you bullshit. I know we need the little kid's face to say, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Throw the it's, bullshit uh, back. It's, um, but still, I mean, that, it's nice that you went back to it. Yeah. Because, you know, um, there's, there's things in my life that I started when I was young and I really was good at and I really enjoyed But then somewhere for a reason, I said, nope, we're not going back there. We're just going on to whatever this thing is that we're doing now. And it's it's been interesting, though, I, I got to say. But see, but let me, so do you get any satisfaction out of writing? I mean, do, do you feel like enjoyment or does it relax you or? It depends. Uh, if I'm on a roll, I walk away and I'm just thrilled and it, it, it is relaxing. Uh, I may have taken out my very first book, maybe a little bit revengey that, and it will never hit the shelves because it's not very well uh, di disguised revengey. Oh, man. <laughs> But yeah, I, I do love it. A lot of times I like having done it more than I like doing it, but I do love to write. Well, I'm glad because I mean, really, first off, you're writing in genres that I like, so that's a plus. And because uh, there are a lot of writers out there, but I just haven't seen anything. I don't know. For some reason, it just seems like we hit this low. Maybe maybe because COVID came and everybody got sick and nobody was doing anything and then the, t the strike went on and uh, so we've had like four years of nothing new, but, but even before that, it just felt like we were just repeating the same shit. Uh, we were just, we'd take something successful and we'd just repeat it. And you mean like Avatar? No, I'm still pissed about Avatar too. I, I, all I heard for 10 years, oh, it's the best thing about Avatar. Like, no, it was crap. 
was pretty though. Oh, so. it was pretty. I'm not even gonna lie about that. No, I can't argue that it's pretty, but no, it was like some kind of half ass <laughs> repeated at first. <laughs> Plus they gotta go kill the kids. Anyway, um no, I mean what well, it, it's rare that it, that a second was as good as the first one. It does happen, mind you. But it is a rare thing. I, I, I do have to say that. And Dune's coming out this year. Yes, Dune. I got to meet the writer of Dune. Um, he was one of the speakers at, at the gala year before last. Oh, no, I think he was just a guest. But because we did the preview, they had the preview of the movie uh, at the event. And I told John, John introduced me. Got John should never introduce me. Got John goes, oh, this is Joe Vitaldo. And we and he said, I said, look, dude. Please tell me you didn't fuck up Dune. Oops, excuse me. I didn't mean to use that language. Beep, I'm going to have to edit that out of you. And uh, John just looks at me like, I can't believe he just asked him that. I said, look, I said, the original was good, man. I said, I, you know, I know people want to screw with things. They think they're better. And I got to say the other two that followed it wasn't or, or not were not as good. There were some good parts in it, but they weren't as good. I was like, please. He said, no, you're going to really like this. He said, we, we broke it up into two parts. And I was like, and then he kind of gave me a hint about how the first part was going to be. And the first part was everything that was not exciting. <laughs> it, it, it stops off right when he meets um, um, the tribe. The and Fremen. Of course, yeah, the Fremen. And that's when, of course, when everything gets exciting. And uh, but we're going to see. It's going to be long. It's going to be out. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, but there's, there's so many things and so many movies, not even sci-fi. I just see movies sometimes. And people remain, they, they, I hear all this hype and then I'll see it and I'm like, oh my God. And I have learned not to watch previews anymore because half the movies I watch, that is the movie, is the freaking previews. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of like, what? Well, we might see Barbara in a movie or we might see one of her books in a movie. That would be amazing. Yes, I'll be having a, I, I know her, I know her. <laughs> yeah, I want to meet all these authors because sooner or later, somebody in this group is going to hit it big. Well, because think of it this way. The judges have all hit it big. You know, and it's funny because somebody had asked me about uh, Tim Powers the other day and what he wrote and what was his claim to fame. And I was like, well, I don't know. Why don't you look him up and see? And then, of course, you know, people don't realize <laughs> what it was that he actually wrote. And when you, when I tell them, they're like, uh-uh, somebody else. And I said, no, he wrote them. And they stole them. And he finally got credit for them. I was like, look it up, people. I'm not, I'm not getting into that because that's a whole show by itself. But he's a nice guy. He, he's a... He's a coke drinking f f maniac, but uh, in all fairness to him, when I was young, when I was in my twenties and thirties, I drank coke like it was—I don't know, man. I just drank it nonstop. We would go through a twelve pack easy. And I don't—I'm drinking some tonight, but I really do drink it. Well, I'm drinking it tonight because Coca Cola is picking up the sponsorship of this show. So, um, but no, I, it's not that I don't like coke. Dude, I've used Coke for everything, including cleaning my battery on my car. So I don't tell me I know what it's, what it's like. Uh, but I'll tell you, if I, my stomach's feeling bad, I drink a Coke. It's like, shh, it's like, it's like drinking Pepto. Uh, what do you What do you want to know? No, she's married with like fourteen kids. Yeah, she had, no, she decided. She, well, no, she's like one of the Mormon people. She had a kid every other year or something. <laughs> so I was like, that's not. <laughs> Why is it that every show somebody's got to ask me if the guest is married? I mean, how many of you people are single in this group? I mean, I'm getting worried. I mean, this happens a lot. Go get married, people. Or get a lover or get a friend. Get something. I don't know what to tell you, but find somebody. Mm -mm. What do you mean I'm not married? Because it's not a ring on the finger? No, that doesn't mean shit in this family. <laughs> I hate to be the one to tell you that. Mm -mm. You can look the missus up. She's actually online. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she is. Um, what was that, Christopher? Oh, okay, so Chris wants to know if you just had an option. Like if you could just walk out into a place and just sit down and, and just use any ideas from anybody you wanted to. No, we're not talking AI. We'll talk about that after a while. Um, what kind of book would you think you'd pull together? Would it just be solid sci-fi or would you dredge in? Because there's a lot of parts to dredge in from. Uh, I tend to go back and forth. To me, it's I, I have kind of that thriller mystery vibe, but the setting is the fantasy or the sci-fi. Yeah. Sorry, so. I was just throwing, somebody just asked me about it. <laughs> it's, uh, 
Oh no! You know what? I'll find it in here. It's in here somewhere. It's called yeah. Six Wars. It's uh, and that one is uh, in a world where the sixth sense has been weaponized. A woman has to walk across oh, a world to find her son. Actually, when you send you, uh, no, actually, Christopher, we talked about that because um, it was something she said at the conference that stuck in my head about that. I mean, at the at the Writers of the Future event, it stuck in my head about it. We actually talked about you in the show one night for writing it. So, hold on. I'll have to finish looking at it. But I, it's right here, guys. I got it right here. I see Barbara. But hold on. So, we were talking we were on a show and it completely had nothing to do with any of this. This was a ufology show. And we were talking about psychic things. And somebody brought up your book. So, I don't know if they had got it from here or if they heard you talk about it. I was like, oh shit, you know what? I remember reading this uh, on airplane flying <laughs> to Tam um, Los Angeles. And uh, so you, so it was complete. I mean, it was, but they plugged you good, but it was completely out of context of, of being an author's book. Uh, it was just, it came out uh, because somebody was talking about, uh, you know, predicting the future, uh, using psychic abilities to predict the future so that we could stop crime ahead of time and, and, and or, looking backwards and finding, but anyway, uh, it was interesting. So I, it just came up in the middle of it. I, I, it was funny. Cause as soon as you said that, I said, Oh shit, I remember that. Uh, Cause it was a good conversation. It, it really was. Uh, the, uh, they had a good group of guests on and, uh, it was, it was just actually a good conversation. I know they got the color version of this in here somewhere. Mm -hmm. See, this is a black and white version guys. I'm gonna have to find a color version though. Cause it doesn't stand out enough. Uh, it doesn't stand out enough for some reason. Well, no, they put a name on every page. That's how I know where I'm at. <laughs> the Six colors are all in the front. Yeah. Six. Six. So three. she's on page 44, if y'all want to look her up. If you have the book, it's on page 44. If you get the book, that's where she starts at 44. Actually, it's a little, it's a decent sized story. It's got a few pages up in here, man. What we got here? Uh, we are. Uh, so you got 66. Oh, yeah, you got some pages to read through there. People get into the story. Um, well, no, they always, when you get one of these books, it's, um, they all, hold on, I'm down here. Everybody's being a pain. When you get one of these books, they have the color pictures from each year. So I, I, I have been lucky to be at the signing um, or the reveal, I guess is what they should call it. So, you know, I'll, you know I'm glad we brought that up because I always like to ask about that. So uh, when you when you saw it, your 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 picture, oh, dang it, it's just gonna try to be one of these kind of irritating things, huh? When you saw, wow, where'd he come from? Hey, Sean, how you doing? You're not on the show tonight. <laughs> Sean Hasler just popped on the screen with us. Oh, that was crazy. So when you saw the the, the artwork for the first time, what did you think? I mean, was it like, oh my god, or was it did you nail or did they nail it? Because I don't oh. even know who did it. It was perfect. The the guy who did my art was it was a scene just right out of the book. I think perfect. I do that. immediately. Okay, guys, it's uh you know what I got that much land. I'm gonna have to turn some land on here so y'all can see it better. But that's it. Will Knight actually did the art. I actually remember Will. Um, mm -hmm. he's insane sob. And uh, but you know what we'll do when I get up in a minute. <clears throat> we got a break coming up in a few minutes. So when I get up, let me mark this so I know where it's at. And we'll turn on the, on the big overhead light so y'all can actually see it better. Mm -hmm. Well, so the reveal is, well, you know, Barbara, tell me what the reveal is. You know it better than I do. Yeah, so the, the illustrators who win then turn around and illustrate one of the stories from the writers who won. So Will won for illustrating something else, and then he turned around and created this, this illustration for my story, which was amazing. So you walk into a room... You don't know who's is who's or or who did what, and you have to go find your story that is now an illustration. And there's some just beautiful, beautiful illustrations, and yeah, there I are. just knew mine immediately. And you know, <clears throat> and that's what's so crazy about this. So being so, it's been four sets. This will be the fifth set of winners I'll have had the privilege to go to, and it amazes me how many am zoned right the hell in. Because you don't really see the story tidy. You have to get up close enough to see it. I mean, you can see the artwork, but you don't really see anything written on it until you get closer. And, uh, well, it's it's based 
on the on the story, guys. That's what it's based on. It's a story. Yeah, the the illustrator reads the story and does the artwork. And remember, this is kind of a lesson in what you should have when you cover. And, and I bring this up all the time. I have bought many books based on covers that I was well, I shouldn't have bought. But I bought many based on covers that were good. So, but it, the point being is, if it's a really good cover, odds are it will get purchased. And so it does make a difference when you pick up that cover and look at it. You want uh, those stories. I know notice in a lot of of older books from different artists, including people like L. Ron and other 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 writers, H. Uh, G. Wells and a few others. When you look at their old books and you look at the cover, you obviously have an idea what the story is about. You really do. So. It's a good chance you're gonna you're gonna buy it and read it unless you're like oh, let me throw it out on the ground, uh, but it is it is and, and in this case you know it's the same thing, but it still amazes me that they zone in so quickly on these things. Oh God, there's so many people crying too. Jesus, what do you mean? No guys cry too. Don't believe that, but yes, <laughs> the guys are wailing just as much as the girls. So I don't even think they're not. Uh, no, there's nothing wrong with that. You must be an old guy, but. There's nothing wrong, guys. It's, it's a, guys are allowed to cry, okay? okay look, see, look, wait, look at me. See how big and ugly and scary I am? Yes. I, I have had a chance of crying once or twice in my lifetime. And I'm a burly old bastard. So you young people, it shouldn't even be a thing. It should just be an acceptable thing. Yes. A good cry is healthy for you, too. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, take just, just take it from the old guy. Try it once or twice. You'll enjoy it. Well, it depends. <laughs> I agree with you, Mike. It does depend what, what you're crying about. But yeah, some things are much worse than others. So uh, what was that, Matt? No, I'm, I'm going to ask her right now. So Matt wants to know, can you write about your life and turn it into sci-fi? Oh, absolutely. Um, I I did that with the this one. This is Cops in Space. I'm associated with the police department. And I'm not going to really tell you more than that, but <laughs> you can absolutely write about your real life and put it in a space station and make it important that it's in a space station for some reason. Mm. Y'all better watch out. Y'all don't even know what she does for a living, guys. I'm just saying, y'all better watch yourselves. When y'all flirt with and stuff, y'all better be careful. I'm not telling you why. I'm just telling you be careful. Uh, she, she's not as sweet and innocent as she looks. I'm telling y'all, y'all better be careful. Mm-hmm. Let's just say she may have had some training somewhere along the line. And, and leave it at that. <laughs> Actually, if you really want to know what I'm talking about, there's other interviews we've done you can go listen to. Yes, I'm being torturous. I know, I know. It's, it's one of my favorite things to be. Um, What do you mean, write about Joe Biden? Oh, she, so I don't know who just, just posted this. They want to know if you could write a story about Joe Biden, about being... What, oh, a sci-fi story about Joe Biden. It'd be boring. I don't, yeah, I don't do very political stories. I mean, and, that's and, not and, and, on that, and on that question, do you mean in politics or just, just like G.I. Biden? Is that what you're talking about? No, oh, dude, you're confusing me now. Yes, you're confusing me now. There's, I don't want to write anything about him. and I don't think anybody does right now. Well, when he saves the world, then we'll talk about it. How's that? Okay. When this, when when he completely and utterly saves everything, we'll talk about it. Uh, Jeffrey, you can always ask her. <laughs> he's he's they're writing in a room. Oh, what she does? What she does? What she does? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just funny. Um, well, we can torture y'all if we want to. That's that's part of life. What do you mean? Does she have a dog? Where did that come from? I had a I had a boxer and then I had a boxer before that and then it, they Ooh. broke my heart. So yeah, we currently do not have a dog. Uh, I had a boxer named Susie. She's a beautiful dog. She's a cow dog, actually. She, uh, me and her and I used to go out and uh, anytime somebody would bring their cows and just way back people. Just, we got to take the way back machine for this. But uh, anytime they'd bring their cattle in and they'd break the fence, me and her would go. Her and I would go catch them. Shit, back then they paid us a hundred dollars a cow to get them. Guys, a hundred dollars <laughs> back then was. What? Two grand a day. I'll tell you, you don't even know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was good. She grabbed by the nose. They couldn't get her off of them. She's a beautiful dog. No, just they just boxes don't live long. My chihuahuas, uh, Charlie lived to be almost 19 and Max lived to be almost 15. 
So, and they, and, and if we'd have had the more money as we did over the years, they'd probably live longer than that. Uh, well, no, no, even big dogs now they're saying can live 10, 10 to 15 years and little dogs can make it up into this one. I think that almost made it to 30. What <clears throat> can you do? Yeah. Charlie died. Broke my heart. That was my buddy, man. He used to run around all over. And I told my wife, I said, you get a fucking small dog. I'm going to divorce your ass. I did. I was, I was, I did. I said, no small dogs allowed in this bleeping, bleeping house. And then my, my middle stepdaughter comes home and gives her one. Oh, look how cute. Then I said, okay, can't be in the bed. Oh, sh- <laughs> you're a softy, Joe. Yes, I am. Shh, I can't tell anybody that. <laughs> when I go places, people say, oh my God, he looks like he's going to kill you. Uh, it's, it's just sad. It is just sad. Somebody took a picture. So the other morning, I'm getting up. My black dog, Lola, she's all of like six pounds, five and a half pounds. So I opened my eyes and, and I'm grabbing my phone as I opened my eyes and I looked up and I took a picture. Of course, it's her ass like this far from my nose. I'm like, Lola, you, you she's like, Dad, how you doing, Dad? <laughs> she just feels the need to get up, dance on my chest in the morning. Like, yeah, it's not like you know she's there, but still. Uh, I, I, look, guys, having, having dogs that are spoiled is not, it's like having kids that are spoiled. It's just right. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't. What do you mean? You shouldn't spoil your kids or your dogs? Well, you know, <clears throat> you should just not as as bad as I do. That's all. <laughs> Let's just be honest about it. It's probably a sin what I do. Oh, uh, what can I say? So, what you got for Miss Barbara? Oh, I, I'm with you. I, don't, I think she's BSing us about fifty, man. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> Thank you. I love you, whoever you are. <laughs> Oh no, no! She can only win the writers' contest once. Yeah, that, that's that's all they do. But there is nice gigs because like like when they're in Utah, places she's around, uh, they'll bring her in for book signings and stuff like that. So you can get exposure to people like that, and you can sell books. And well, yeah, actually, you give a damn book to Sarah, you don't have to worry about it. She's like a sign. I mean, she's like a selling fool. If you have a good, if you ever go to any of these conferences or cons, and you meet. Uh, with the writers of future this girl she's like like five foot tall her name is sarah and uh she don't talk to her don't talk to her <laughs> don't talk to her if you talk to her you're gonna buy something so don't talk to her i'm just telling you i'm warning don't talk to her <clears throat> she is a sweetheart she really is um she she's just but she's a really good seller guy so beware i'm just you know buyer beware and uh well no so what they do is is like people like barbara can come in no, they don't charge. They don't charge off of that, do you? No, they don't charge off of that to come sit. No, no, they just let them come sit at the table because they got they got uh, two tables usually, and you can sit at one and sign books or autographs or talk with people and yeah. And because Emily and Sarah are like dragging people in, um, mm-hmm. it makes it easier. No, okay, that was a bad way I said that, but no, they're really good at what they do. Matter of fact. Emily, stop looking at them cowboys. I know what you're doing right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm sending her a letter as soon as I get offline. That is, I know where you at. <laughs> her and Sarah in Vegas with the cowboys. Uh, yeah, okay. If you're in Vegas, guys, there's um for the two weeks, uh, there's a conference down there. It's a book thing, but it's for Westerners, for cowboys, basically. There's a lot of cowboys running around with their hats and their belts and their boots and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got a drone flying around. <laughs> Emily don't know I'm watching her. <laughs> no. Emily is John Goodwin's wife. Yes. No. I'm I'm picking on them too. And and I know Sarah's husband as well. No, they're good people. They're really good. Oh, I don't mean her eyes won't bulge out their head from time to time, but they're good people. <laughs> well, everybody's human. Oh yes, you can't. You gotta be you. You can't get upset about stuff like that. I mean, if you, you know, if you're married to somebody, go and grab somebody. It's different. But when somebody looks, it's just natural. What do you mean? How many times I got slapped? When when I was young, hmm, a few times. <laughs> when you look at it, <laughs> uh, did I say that out loud? Shit. Okay. Anyway, we're gonna move on to something else now. Um, I don't know. So, Deneen, Deneen, where are you from, Deneen? Y'all haven't asked y'all where y'all from there. Where are you from, Deneen? Oh, so you're in um, 
Boca, Boca Raton, you're talking about Florida, right? Yeah, I've been to Boca Raton before. How rich are you, girl? Maybe maybe you should go make a donation to the network. Buy a couple of Barbara's books. <laughs> you living in Boca Raton, girl. You're not poor. <laughs> Just Even the help can't live in Boca Raton. It's too expensive. They got to live outside. I got friends down there. And it's 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 richy, richy, richy down there. So anyway, what, what, what's your question? Okay, so. No, no. I, I, <laughs> Uh, no, I got it. So you're talking about anybody in the world. Okay, so she's she's basically asking if you could take any sci-fi writer in the past, or I'm sorry, not writer, but anybody, any writers like novel, like say uh, Jules Verne's, and and rewrite one of his novels, which would it be? Damn, that's a tough question. I didn't even realize that. So can I give you a weird answer that's totally you're not kidding. the answer to the question? <laughs> Go ahead, spit it out. <laughs> so. Uh, I broke my wrist. This is a long story, kind of. I broke my wrist in Oregon, and we were driving back to Utah, and we were driving through the nothing of Eastern Oregon, and I maybe had a little drug, a little bit of drugs on board because I had broken my wrist. And between the drugs and the really long drive, I decided, and the grasses um, and the nothing, I decided that I was going to write Moby Dick, but <laughs> rewrite Moby Dick, but in the future in a dystopian sci-fi version. So wish me luck. <laughs> well, that, that, see, but that could actually be interesting. Uh, yeah. Be weird. It's going to be weird. Well, well, that's the thing is how weird is it going to be? Is it going to be like Dr. Who weird? Is it going to make Dr. Who look like he's sleeping? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You see, <laughs> what was that, Karen? Um, oh, please do not get me started on Dr. Who. No. That's just, my problem is lately, see, I was fine with the new doctor. He was like, la, 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 la. And then stupid me starts watching uh, some of the old doctors. got a big special going on right now. And I didn't realize, you know, first off, you know, they have Gallifrey in like a third or maybe even half of the episodes of the old Doctor Who. So it made me wonder why the new Doctor Who killed them off when they used them so much in the old Doctor Who. Uh, that kind of aggravated me a little bit. Then I didn't realize how many stories they took from the old Doctor Who and put into the new Doctor Who. I was like, oh, man, wait a minute. You know, if y'all remember when when Picard Star Trek came out, there were several episodes they used in the new Star Trek that were just the old Star Trek. There was even one or two that were almost word for word. Uh, Well, in, in this case, the new Doctor Who used quite a few more of the old ones than I realized. Uh, and I also didn't realize how politically correct the old Doctor Who actually was, uh, which was kind of disappointing. But anyway, we're not going to go there. <laughs> it's um, it's the world is weird, people. So I, but but anyway, so I've been watching a few of the old ones, and and it, and, and it changed my view on the new ones. I hate to say, and then the two new ones with David Tennant, I actually like them, but then I don't like. Them. See, I'm like a fickle 12-year-old people. What can I say? Um, no, really. I mean, there's aspects I really like of the new Doctor. Well, the second one just kind of sucked. But um, you mean about his daughter who's not a daughter? That, that Okay, that's all fine. You want to play I'm a, I'm a whatever sexual thing I want to be. That, that's all fine. But make up your mind. Pick something. I don't even care what it is at this point. <laughs> just, just pick something. Uh, well, we well no. Donna's daughter is technically a male that identifies as female. Yes, I know y'all didn't catch that, did y'all? Uh, I know. See, I, my problem with all this is isn't the fact that they're doing that. It's that my problem is is I don't really care, and I just want to watch sci-fi. It's like watching football, and I, I don't come there to see, learn political lessons. I have CNN and ABC and Fox and all the rest of them bullshit channels for that. Plus, I do news myself. So really and truly, I don't really want to see it on things I want to see to relax. And I watch Doctor Who to relax, to escape, really. It's like when I get her book, I'll be reading it to escape, not to relax. It's uh, Well, no, that's that's what it should be for. But if you're going to have to teach me stupid lessons in the middle of it, I can't relax. Then I just get aggravated and then I don't want to watch y'all anymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, Barbara's much nicer than I am. Yes, she is. Look how sweet she is. 
What do you mean? Oh, uh, Randy wants to know if you got children. I do. I have a boy and a girl who are almost adults. Well, you lucky. Uh, because they're almost adults. See, mine is an adult and he's still a child. <laughs> no, my, my son is 30. I shouldn't even say this out loud. My son is 37 years old. He just got married just recently. Yes, yeah, 37. Mm -hmm. And I had to beat him with his lightsaber just the other day. Just the other day. Yes, I did. Uh -huh. No, really, I did. So for to get the lightsaber we were talking about early in the show, we took a little small break, and I was dressed one way, and then I wasn't when I came back. I looked differently. So figure it out. If you know what it is, whoever gets it first, write to iCarcox.net, and uh, you'll get the lightsaber. Mm -hmm. No, it's not Kylo Ren's. It's um, a Qui-Gon Jinn. Um, Qui-Gon Jinn was uh, Master Obi-Wan Kenobi's teacher. Yes. There you go. Now we got it all straight, right? Now, yeah, okay. Somewhere along the line, I might show you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Okay, this question came up a while back. I'm, I'm going to ask Barbie this, even though I find this kind of offensive. I'm still going to ask. So this guy, this guy's asked this question, three or four different hosts. Basically, he wants to know why can't anyone write a sci-fi novel based on just gay people like the women are lesbians and the men are gay Why can't I, I, I don't know go for I, it I, 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 <laughs> see because see i find that offensive i'm just like well first off i mean it's highly unlikely that you you know a whole shit full of people are going to be like that but even if they are is it going to even make any difference in the story itself when they're getting their heads lopped off and thrown out in the space i mean are you really going to care what sex they are uh, or who they sleep with I don't know, guy. I mean, I, I understand you want to make a, a, a statement there, but I, I just, I don't know. It seems a little bit on the stupid side to me. Oh, any moans, groans, bitches, or complaints, write to Michelle DeRoche. Yes, Michelle DeRoche. Yes. Who is she? She is a station manager. Yes, write to her. Well, and if uh, somebody wants that story so much, they can they can write it. You can't write it. No, you cannot turn it into writers of the future. Do <laughs> you forget that shit? Matter of fact, you know what? I want you to send it to writers of the future. Uh, no. Put on there, uh, Joe and Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, y'all. No, I don't really care either way, but no, they won't accept it. No. I told y'all before, PG-13. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, it, but if you're serious, writersfuture.com, you can, you can go there and take the course, or you can send anything you want to submit, you can submit there. And if you want to buy anything, it's... um. Galaxypress.com, yes. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's all kind of stuff over there. I would recommend doing one of the pads or something because then you get way more material for a way better price. Plus, you get a nice pad out of it, too. Yeah, it works out good that way. Um, what do you mean, ebooks? Oh, okay. So, first, he wanted to know if, if you're doing ebooks, but then he's, he said something about why don't you do like an anthology of, of sci-fi and like fantasy, sci-fi, fantasy, sci-fi, sci-fi, is that what you're saying? Yeah. I have no idea. Why don't you, Barbara? <laughs> it is his question. I'm just asking. Never These people are rude to you. <laughs> Never occurred to me. And you know why they asked that? Because one of the guests just recently, one of the authors just recently has two of them out. Nice. Where he he's 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 uh who I think it was Sean actually, wasn't it? It was Sean Hazlitt. Well, yeah. It was one because he did uh we are World War, War, and then two, and then we were, I think he's got Weird World War War China out. Now I can't I always screw it up, but uh, he's got like three or four of these out, and they're anthologies. So, but because I asked him about using the stories a certain way, he said no, I can't because some of them, because there's twelve of them, it's just some of them are slightly too different than the others to kind of flow through as a like a novel or something. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have an anthology that's one or the other, and I have started the other. <laughs> I don't remember which. <laughs> well, I mean, the only way you can get it is you got to experiment to see what you like. But don't do like I do and read it yourself. I mean, when you're done, give it to somebody else. We, yeah, you know the rule. Don't give it to nobody in the family. Um, <laughs> what do you mean why did I say that? Because all the all the judges always tell me the same thing. Don't give it to your brother. Don't give it to your sister. Don't give it to mom and daddy because they ain't going to tell you the truth. 
<laughs> give it to some friends, take it to a writer's group or something like that. Well, you got to be careful if you bring it to a writer's group because you, you, if you do that, you should at least watermark it um, in case it turns out to be a good story and somebody decides to steal it or something. So you got to be careful with that. Well, a lot of authors do work with writer's groups, so it's different. It's different for different people. It ain't hard to watermark anything, my friend. Oh, no. Most computers these days have it built in somewhere. You just got to find it. Mm -hmm. You just run it through it. Do an edit real quick. Matter of fact, if you look at any of the posters, any of the pictures I posted from my phone in the last two weeks, you'll see on the left corner, it's watermark. Yes. Because I found people using my likeness and stuff on TikTok recently. Mm -hmm. You got some perverts out there. Yeah, man. I'm telling you what. Uh -huh. Do not make me send Bob to visit you because Bob will come visit you. Yes, he has an electric probing stick too, so you best be careful. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Oh my God, you y'all are weirdos. Um, nope, can't answer that. Can't answer that. Can't answer that. Nope, can't answer that. Nope, can't answer. That. It has nothing to do with anything to do with the author. That, that's all personal questions now. Move on. No, she's married. Got fourteen kids. I told you that. God. Well, they're allowed to have like five husbands or something. I don't know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> well, I asked my wife one time. She wanted more than one husband. She's, <laughs> she looks like she's going to kill me. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know. I don't think most women want to have more than one husband because we're a big pain in the ass. That's why. It's uh, Yes, I told you why God put me here. Did you, were you not listening in the beginning of the show? Oh, in any case. Actually, um, she did an interview just recently with John Goodwin, didn't you? Mm -hmm. That hasn't That's aired it. yet, but I just talked yeah. to him a couple of days ago. So that'll probably be the one coming up real soon. Well, John's interviews usually air on Sundays, and then they go on the featured list on Mondays on SoundCloud. And the, well, his show actually airs on Monday, <clears throat> 4 to 5. Yeah, 4 to 5 p.m. So I don't I don't know if, if she's up next. He's, he's got a, He usually keeps quite a few shows ahead of him. So, Well, because he gets them from like when we do the – to write his conventions and he's, he travels a lot and does a lot of different stuff. He just was in uh, Manham, Germany and London just two weeks ago. So mm -hmm. he's a nice guy. Yeah. Trust me. I, why he's a nice guy putting up with all them crazy people's got to put up with is beyond me, but Oh no, people he's, he's, he's way nicer than I am. <laughs> No, look, so, you know, I watch Joni. Joni's one of the coordinators over there, and uh, she's like number three in the in the chain of command. She's number one in me, but she's number three in the chain of command. But um, I watch her. She, she'll be – there'll be five winners or six winners just asking her questions. There'll be five or six helping her asking her questions. Judge will be asking her questions. She's like, la, 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 la. Like, I'd be like, sit down and shut up for a minute, and I'll answer you one at a damn time. See, so I'm telling you, she's nicer than I am. No, she handles it well. She's and she's a very nice woman. She is. She is. Um, and I and I torture. I don't ask her for stuff. I just torture her. <laughs> hey, Joni, how you doing, baby? Come here. Come. I'll tell you. Come over here and sit on Big Daddy's knee. <laughs> she's like, I hurt you, Joe. <laughs> no, she's married. What are you talking about? And she knows I'm teasing her. Mm. Oh no, actually, now if you want to see him, and all of them were in gowns at the uh, gala event. Yes. Yes, you can see Smiley here too. Look, <laughs> you can see everybody. Uh, anybody who attended, yes. Actually, I got to say, in all four crowds I've been with, everybody looked good. Yeah, everybody looked good. No, I was in a tux. Uh, I was in a tux two years and in a suit two years. Mm -hmm. Now I'll probably be in a suit this year. Maybe even part of this might even be wearing. I might be white this year. You know, I like colors, but I like white too. Um, no, it's true. It's still up on the website. You you got to be part of the group to get it, and um, but you have to make a donation. So that's the only way you get in it. No, it's true. I let them pick the shirt, the shirt color, and the tie color, or if I'm wearing a vest or not. Yes, I've been doing it for about two years. It, no, we donated to uh, St. Jude. Yeah, it's a stupid thing, is what it is. There's about 150 people there now, though. Yeah, it's a stupid thing. <laughs> They get in arguments sometimes about. It. I think it's funny, I'm like because you know, I have like uh, I think I have seventeen shirt colors listed there, 
and then 41 ties. So <laughs> you make somebody crazy trying to figure out. <laughs> well, no, uh, uh, a famous friend of mine said, hey, you know, Joe, I've had people do this. I'm like, get the hell out of here. You're stupid. He said, no, you should try. I'm like, no, you're stupid. And then one of the um, one of the regulars said, oh, no, you should do it. And I'm like, really? So we posted it. And I was surprised how many people come in because in order to make a um, choice, you have to pay. I mean, you have to make a donation. You know, every time, yeah. That's what it's for. That's why we're donating it. Yeah, it's it's just a stupid thing. So that's what we're going to do with Barber, huh? Yeah, so we, we'll, for every smile, five bucks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, no, no, I mean, there you go. You know, now, no, she can't get on this because that's a dragon conference. No, I mean the um, the dragon contest that we're trying to put together. It's well, Tom Wood and Larry Warren both agreed. There was, um, I think, I think Echo might have, or at least I talked to her about it, but she probably will. But there's going to be four famous judges that are going to be doing the one side and four winners doing the other side. Well, April Solomon will probably be one of the winners because she draws one hell of a dragon. And she's going to give the guys a run for their money, too. <laughs> I'm just saying. There's a couple other good ones that, that drew dragons. So it'll be interesting to see who wins. All of that's going to be donated as well. <laughs> yeah, you'll only be able to get access to it on one of our TV. It'll be a pay-per-view television event. and uh, You'll only be able to access it that way. Well, yeah, because we're going to let the the winners, the, well, we're going to let them, everybody kind of break down the process and uh, a little bit at a time, you know, and, and just show it. And then we'll get everybody on the night of the, the event and say who's going to win. <laughs> and we'll have everybody on at the same time. Larry Warren's worth, I mean, uh, uh, um, not Larry Warren. <laughs> Why are you calling that? Um, damn it. Oh, Larry, now, well, can't, can't, his, his name is not going to come out of here. But anyway. Uh, he's he. I love talking to this guy. This guy has more stories than anybody I've ever met, and uh, he is just a fabulous and, and he's a fabulous artist. He's a Dungeon Dragons guy, people. Yeah, he did the dragons for Dungeon for D and D. Yes, he's on. Uh, he's he's on a few of our shows we've done with him lately. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you mean you want to do artwork for Barbara? Well, once you get a new book out, write to her. <clears throat> or send her an email. Yeah. Email. Say, I love you, Barbara. I'm going to worship at your feet. Let me do your artwork. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jack, you, you know, if she's 50, you got to watch women in their 50s, man. They dangerous. We're a lot more comfortable with who we are. They dangerous, man. They know too much. <laughs> That's the problem. They know too much at that age. <laughs> Your ass is in trouble. Um, no, really, I'm not young. You little youngins think I'm kidding you, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm just just warning you. That's all. <clears throat> you mean like a TV series? So, no, nah, no, nah, I got you, Martha. So Martha says you should you should write out a uh, like a 24 episode TV series and um, pitch it. Is that what you're saying? To like, well, I know Netflix needs a lot of stuff. That's true. I'm not arguing with that. Netflix put out a thing the other day that they will look at anything, anything. Uh, they can't get anything right now. They just, they just, <clears throat> and they're looking, they're looking to fund ideas. Uh, and, and some of the ones I heard were pretty dumb. You ought to give it a try. Uh, yeah. You never know. Okay. What do you mean? Should I do it? I can't write like that. No, I can write about stuff. I know about it. My brain isn't, that doesn't work that kind of fantasy way. Uh, no, I wish it did. No, I wish it did. I'm not lying, but you know, it, it's uh, it's gotten too dogmatic as I've gotten older. It likes to look like shh or sh 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 stuff like that. Uh, uh, nah. I'm not that kind of writer. I'm, I'm just writing a story that I know about. I'm writing a factual event, basically, that's just really freaky and really scary. Yes, it's an 11 days uh, event. Mm hmm. It's a freaky ass event to y'all find out when I release it or <clears throat> somewhere in my archives. I have talked about this event more than once, but I couldn't tell you what archive it was. You'd have to go look. I would start out looking for golf breeze experiences is what I'd start out looking for. Mm. Yes. That's where I'd start. Barbara, you should come down to golf breeze with us. Apparently. Yeah. Well, you, know, you know what? When I was thinking about that, no, no, I got a better idea. Next time I come out there, you mean you're going to have to get out of Area 51. <laughs> yes. 
Let's do it. <laughs> no, I'm serious. We'll take you to. They're not going to bother her any. Um, you, you, if you look, let me, okay, I'm going to tell you all the truth about something. I shouldn't even tell you all this because I know some of y'all are going to get in trouble. So <clears throat> if you break into Area 51 and you manage to get past the first guard station and they catch you, they're going to pick you up. And I forgot his name. There's a real nice sheriff. I, I met the sheriff of, um, not Roz, where the hell are we? Um, where the little alien in is, um, Rachel. I met the, the sheriff of Rachel, and he told me that. So the first time they catch you, and as long as you don't break barrier two, it's a $750 fine to get out of jail. That's it. So you can actually say you broke into Area 51 and got arrested and got out of jail. Now, if you manage to get past Area 2, which is probably a couple of miles in, it's probably where the original was before they engulfed the new territory. Um then they take you to Area 51. And then getting out. That's, that's, ooh, man, they may hear from you again. Uh, no, really. It, technically, because of the type of base it is, you have no rights. Once you break the second level, you have no rights. You, you, you have now, it's espionage, as far as they're concerned. You have no rights anymore as a citizen. Yeah. So basically, there's some bases in the United States, if you manage to get onto, you have forfeited your rights. I wouldn't for from I mean, you might become some kind of experimental toy for them out there at Area 51. Some new Arthur drug. Shh. Make you write more. Uh, are you, there's a lot of writers who write about Area 51 and other places. Is any of it true out of my house? To hell? Really? Yeah, you know what? It's all true. How's that? Yeah, we're going with that. I like it. Mm -hmm. No. I'm telling you, we'll bring Barbara down there. Um, we'll bring that 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 second that two star general from Space Command with us. He might be able to get us on the base. Yeah, I have a class ten security clearance, so yes, yeah, so we'll just say Barbara's along. And she, we'll just say she's an extraterrestrial. Then <laughs> <laughs> we're bringing it to the base. Oops, man, no, uh, -uh no, no, no. But it would be fun because. People, honestly, all it is, is 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 a fence and a guard tower. And they tell you, no cameras, no drones, no fires. You see drones, cameras, and fires. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? <clears throat> they don't, nobody listens who goes out there. But they do follow you. And don't go out there if you've got any kind of uh, bad voodoo on you. Because uh, you'll probably go to jail. No, they, they, they know who you are within, by the time you step out of the vehicle. They know who you are. They probably know everything you've done in your life and for your entire life. Well, first off, they got facial recognition software. As soon as it locks onto your face, it runs it through. And if you've been on the internet, which a good chunk of us have been, uh, they're going to know who you are. No, they'd probably be scared of Barbara. They probably wouldn't even come out and do her nothing. They'd be like, ah, oh, we heard about you, girl. <laughs> We're going to stay in the guard tower. It's safe. safe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She will whack him in here with Billy Club, man. You <laughs> some ninja ass move. I know it's driving y'all crazy because I won't tell y'all. Huh? <laughs> I'm not going to either. It's one of them things. I can't believe none of y'all gotten this question right. Uh, see, tells me how many of y'all were actually paying attention when we started the show. <laughs> Big fat zero so far. You know, I'll just give it away on Michelle show. Y'all know y'all hate when I give away stuff on Michelle show. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give it away on your shows, Joe? Don't give it away on Michelle's show. That's not fair. <laughs> we don't watch her. <laughs> so what? Okay, I know, I know. When we all ask legit questions, I'll ask them. But some of the questions I'll ask tonight, I'm thinking y'all been smoking something. Uh, before y'all even start, I know it's legal. The day I said something bad, I said, you know, just legal now, Joe. You got to stop that. It's not legal in all states, by the way. And it's not legal in federal territory, in case y'all don't know that either. I had a stupid friend of mine get three years in jail for that. And Col no, he was in Colorado. Oh, no, no, no. All right, quick story. They go out, him and his wife, da 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 da, got some weed, you know, because it's legal in Colorado. Da 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 da, went out to the park, having time, sitting in the thing, getting high. Ranger pulls up, says, What are you doing? He said, We're smoking weed. Said, you can't do that. Oh, it's legal. No, and he said, No, this is a federal park. Stand up, you're going to jail. Mm -hmm. They got three years for three joints. Yes, they got reduced down to, I think, eight months, but still, they got jail time. It was like, you got to be shitting me. Um, no, down here, it's decriminalized. 
but it, it, but not on federal land. See, everybody keeps forgetting that it's still a scheduled one drug. The Fed hasn't changed that. So anytime the Fed's involved, you're in trouble. If mm-hmm. the states are involved, the states don't even care anymore. A couple of friends of mine who state troopers are so mad, especially ones in Mississippi right now. They're like, we can't search car if we smell weed in it, Jerry. It's bullshit. I'm like, what do you mean you can't search it? He said, you know, because if anybody's got a car and we search it, we're in trouble. I'm like, what? He said, no, we uh, we smell weed now. We're like, unless we smell it on a driver, we ain't, we ain't even bothered with it. I'm like, and they are mad about it because they roadblock like mad people down here. No, it's not legal in all states. It's not. And uh, I don't do that kind of stuff. Oh, my God, people. I can't remember who I am most days, man. Give me a break. No, I'm not anti. No, 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 no. Before anybody starts, I'm not anti anything. And I didn't say I didn't do it when I was younger either. But, I mean, I can't remember who I am half the time, people. I can't be doing shit. <laughs> I'd forget where I live and stuff. Plus, I'm on a diet. And that would make it even worse. <laughs> hmm? No, I'd be eating my way. I'm not. When I used to smoke, I would eat. I, I'd like. Smoking like three hours later, I eat my way through the house. So, <laughs> nope, nope. And now, and really and truly, I have so much stuff going on in my life. It would just, it, it would be good for relaxation, but it would mess me up on everything else because I got just too much other stuff going on. And now, uh, pot always made me lazy. So, I can be honest about it. I, a lot of people are too scared to talk about it. Well, no, I got some police friends that smoke pot, which they shouldn't be because they're going to get fired if they ever get drug tested. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I got some friends. I got I got a lot of friends on the police force, actually, on, on several different police forces. <laughs> I've just made fr- friends with cops. My stepfather was a state uh, was a captain on the state police. Mm-hmm. He's his best friend, who um, taught voice stress analysis for the state police department. Is the one who taught me voice stress analysis. <laughs> he was damn good too, buddy. <sighs> I would never want to be on the receiving end of his ass, man. He was good. Yeah. And Barbara's probably as good as he is, but still. She says, sit down. Let me let me talk to you for a minute, buddy. <laughs> uh, um, no, that was her. So if you get, by the way, if you get the 10 book set, you get her book. It's in there, book 37. Mm-hmm, the Sixers. Mm-hmm. Well, we're not going to tell you the story. Read about it. <laughs> No, you, you know, y'all remind me of people who like to sex chat on the internet. Give me pictures, give me pictures, give me pictures. So you want give me story, give me story. Yes, it's, you know, shame on you. You're a pervert. See that? <laughs> no, because I get authors that come on this show, all on, on most of our shows all the time. And sometimes we get caught up in a conversation and uh, they'll start just telling you about the book. And then before you know it, we're like two thirds of the way through the book. Mm, bad, 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 bad. Now you can say you can say a little bit about the beginning, a little bit about the middle. You don't need to say anything about the end. Uh, well, yeah, sometimes y'all do guess the ends, and sometimes y'all are not even close to right. <laughs> sometimes y'all are in crack. Yes. So uh, Elizabeth said, she said, thank you, you've been really nice. Make Joe shut up. Um, <laughs> can can oh. you tell me? You gotta know it is. Can you tell me uh, when you're what, what's your next project, I guess, is what she's trying to spit out here. Gotcha. So this set is a trilogy. Ooh, so I just I released like the second one, and um, I'm writing the third one. Get the trilogy, people. Support the author. <laughs> so y'all don't understand. It's like me personally or, or, or her. <clears throat> if y'all are supporting us all the time, then we only can do, we don't have to do anything else. We can do this for a living. And, the, you know, the more you, you have time to spend writing, and the more you can relax and get right into easier. Well, people, everyday life sucks. Well, okay, not always, but it does suck. I mean, you got to go to work. You got to do things. You, shit you don't want to do. You got to deal with the general public, which is always going to be stressful because they're always a bunch of asses right now. And uh, No, I'm used to, to a country that's relaxed <clears throat> and friendly. Today's country, this country, people are just mad. And, and if you, I ask them why, there's a whole realm of reasons why. Well, one of the reasons you want to know what the first reason is, oh, the next president's going to probably be one of them in jail, either Donald Trump or Joe Biden. We're both criminals. I'm like, and, and I hear this all the time. Why can't we have somebody who's not a criminal? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and, and then they get mad when I laugh because I think it's funny because, you know, somehow or another we ask for this because we're the reason they're there. <laughs> so, like, 
Give me a break. Uh, don't get mad at me, people. Look, it's the truth. And, and I didn't put them there, and I don't really care at this point. Uh, I just I just want something different than what we got. That's all I can say. I, could, I There's a lot of people I could vote for. I could vote for Barbara. I could vote for myself. Uh, I could vote for um, who? Lindsey Graham. What? No, I can't vote for Lindsey Graham. I'm sorry. I could vote for Nikki Haley. DeSantis, I like Florida. I don't. I don't DeSantis, maybe so. I don't know. I'm not voting for Donald Trump. And I'm not voting for Joe Biden. And I'm not voting for what's his face from California. I would jump off a cliff. Be, to me, he's the worst choice out of all of them. Uh, what do you mean why I say that? Because do you know how many people moving out of the state? Over 2 million. They got the highest, the highest, the highest unemployment rate in the country. The highest amount of people leaving. Yeah. And probably the worst taxes of anywhere in the country. What do you mean? Florida, Florida don't even have income tax. No, they don't. And they're 26th on crime where California's third. <laughs> it's just not even a comparison. Uh, and you know what's sad? California is a beautiful, gorgeous state. It's a, it's, it, if you get rid of the people, it's a great state. No, really. I just, I say we file eviction <clears throat> on the whole damn state and start from scratch. Uh, I know. I'm going to get all kind of letters over that one. Poor Barbara's like, I'm, I'm getting out of here before Joe gets me in trouble. <laughs> what, why do you want to know? All right, I'll ask her, Chris. Chris says, do you do you like to pig out while you're writing? I have, why did you ask that? Oh, because you like to munch while you're writing. Oh, I said, okay, I'll ask. I already asked her, actually. <laughs> uh, I, can, I can munch. Uh, Denise says she likes to have like a little light cocktail and a sugar cookie when she's writing. Nice. That's okay. What was that? And Jackie says he 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 eats edible then writes. Oh wait, I want to see what you're writing after the edible, man. I just want to see. I'm not saying anything. See, that's another reason I couldn't I couldn't write anything if I was loaded. I'd be like, do 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 with my. That's I just couldn't, man. No, again, I'm not anti anything. Well, maybe a few things, but not that. I mean, I, I am kind of anti things like fentanyl and hard drugs, but you can smoke as much pot as you want. I don't care. It's not my business. It, it, eat edible. As long as it ain't affecting nobody around you or your family, I don't care. You're a grown adult. Help yourself. Maybe you'll write a book. I don't think it's that easy. You know, talking with Barbara tonight, I don't, I don't think it's that easy to write a book. Cake, cakewalk. Yes. So many words. <laughs> oh, you want to do a book of poems, po uh, rhymes, poems, right? Well, oh, that's up to her. I can't make her do it. All right, Barbara. Get the writing, girl. Darth <laughs> Joe's coming for your ass. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> oh, man. I couldn't write. Don't even ask me to rhyme anything. She probably could because she's actually an author. I don't. I don't know. It'd be like jibber jabber. It would be like jibber jabber. Could you, could, are you any good at rhymes or anything like that? I mean, I know some authors are, and some can. I mean, some are like Joe. Are you crazy, man? I, you rhyme, buddy. I ain't doing that. <laughs> That's a lot of work if you don't want them to be trite. And, yes, I can imagine. Yeah, rhyming's hard. Yeah, one of one of one of the authors told me I'm not a rapper, Joe. I can't do that. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, man. That's not quite the same thing. <laughs> I mean, it can be close sometimes, but it's not the same thing. Um, uh, La, La, La Latoya, La, La, is that your name? La, La Lona from Brazil wants to know who is your really who is your favorite author of all times. That's hard. Yeah, I was thinking that's There's a tough so one. So many. <laughs> so many. Um, I keep reading Sean and McGuire stuff over and over and over. So we'll go with that today. I have lots, but I'll go with that today. Okay, now next question was, <laughs> as soon as you said that, Michael wrote, who is that? Sean and McGuire? Uh, yeah. she, she's... She's freaking amazing. Um, you, you should look her up. That's the easiest way. She's got three different series and 
There sure. you go. Awesome. Uh, he said, what kind of genre are you talking about before he looks her up? Uh, Shauna and writes kind of an urban fantasy. She's got cryptids in one series. She's got elves in another series. And- oh, yeah. That's right. If you're out, Mark, yeah, I know. He said, okay, he's going to look her up. That's, that's, he's a, he's a big fan of that kind of writing. He said something about, he said something about Dungeons and Dragons. That's what got him into a lot of different uh, types of reading. Nice. He started reading different stuff because of it. Uh, what's that? Doyle. Where are you, Doyle? Doyle Manoyle. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doyle. Where are you? Oh, London. Hey, what's up? You didn't go see John when he was in London? You should have stopped by and seen him. John, John, no, John will say hi to anybody. I mean, don't be rude to him, but he'll say hi to anybody. He's a nice guy. What do you got? He says, have you thought about uh, using an influence from like England or one of the European countries? Uh, like, is like, what do you mean? Like, as a background. As a, oh, as a background character. Oh, he means, he said, when you're developing a character, would you consider using... I guess he means like their, their personalities or what is it? Something like that. I guess the essence of being English where we're different Americans. We, we kind of, you know, we're just a little different. <laughs> words are different. We're a little, I don't know how to put it in words, man. I don't think I've ever run across anything. I couldn't put words before. <laughs> Shit. That's I weird. would love that, but I don't have enough experience. I don't have like a bestie who's from England because that would totally help me hear that voice and that character in my head. No, I can't. And I just don't have that right now, unfortunately. I, Someday I'm not, maybe. I'm not allowed to listen to accents. They get me in trouble. <laughs> Within 15 minutes, I'm trying to repeat somebody's accent. Sometimes I'm good. Uh, someone in my house says I should never do accents. We're not going to mention any names. No, you should never do an accent. You don't sound like that. I'm like, yeah, I do. No, no. <laughs> so, I don't argue. Um, what do you mean, lecture? You mean put together an author's lecture tour on what? On how it is to come up and work hard and become an author? Well, I guess that's true because most, you know what, in all fairness, most of the authors I talk to at writers have a day job. There's a few of them that, there's a few authors that have either done better and they're, and they're not got a day job. And there's a few that didn't have a day job that were making, but to get into writers of the future, you can only be making X amount of money to start off with guys. Yeah. If you big famous author, you can't you know. or if you've made X amount of dollars, you can uh, join. And again, to answer that question, you've asked five times PG 13. And you can't write about anything. You got to write about certain genres. I think there's eight of them or something. It's on a website. Go look. You mean what I'm writing? No, mine, mine can't be sent in. To, uh, it's well over the 17,000 words. Mm-hmm. What What was that? No, indeed. No. Oh, you mean if I if I did something that was 17,000 words and it was even reasonable, I would win? No, that's not true. Well, because they wouldn't know it was me. What's blind judged? So it's proofread and then it's sent. It's only The only thing the judges get is a number. Matter of fact, if you win, they got to go look up the number in a computer to find out who the hell you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's one of the reasons I like the contest. Mm-hmm. No, it just, it just doesn't work that way. Well, if that's a case, I would bribe them and get the $5,000 every year, but it doesn't seem to work that way. Mm-hmm. Well, they, um, what do they do? They let you bring your family. Is that, is that how it worked on? On the last day, I forgot. I remember John told me like five times, but it goes right out of my head. Yeah, I, I, my aunt is in California, and so she came to the ceremony because the rest of the family was busy. Yes, well, she got a, she got a nice family. She seemed like they're nice, friendly. <laughs> no, actually, I, horrible I, people. I, horrible. Right. They're just evil. They're just damn yeah. evil. I have actually seen a couple of winners actually bring their whole family and their kids and all, which was kind of. Strange to see children at the gala, but still, um, with all us old drunken people. Yeah. Uh, wait, so wait, I'll ask her in a second. Let, let me think what I can remember. So, I know they don't pay for the rentals for the tux, I mean, or for the dress, and they don't pay for food. Is that how it works? And they pay for everything else? 
I can't remember John. I, you know, I should know this because I've, I've asked this question a hundred million times, and, and right as people have told me this a hundred million times, but for some reason, it won't stay in my head. Um, I brought my dress, and they paid for anything food wise that we did together. Oh, okay. but yeah, if we did it separately, they didn't. Yeah, but they paid for flights and the hotel and the, the teachers. Yeah. Oh, and that's right. You got to stay at the Roosevelt. You didn't have to stay at that crappy Lowe's hotel. And uh, oh, did I say that? I lied. Damn, I'm going to get in trouble tonight for sure, man. It's a good thing John's not with me. I didn't like the Lowe's. No, people, I didn't like it. I liked the Roosevelt. I didn't like the Lowe's hotel. I don't even like shopping at Lowe's store store. So, and I'm a contractor. I like. I just didn't like. The other one was different. I, I liked the way it was set up. It was more conducive for what we were doing. Plus, I could spy on everybody much better. Well, because they had a big lobby, and then they had an upper maison, and you could sit up there and watch everybody down there. And like on the, to put this in perspective, so there's a there's a day when they tell the authors they have 24 hours to write a story. So I was talking with Tim Powers, and, and um, he said, you already get as many pictures as you can while they're writing a story. So I was all over the place, all over the lobby. But nobody knew I was taking their picture because I was either I'd be sitting at the bar talking with somebody or sitting upstairs talking. I was always talking with somebody. So they really and the phone's always in my hand or the camera's always in my hand. So you don't really know your pictures being and I got hundreds of them. Some of these people are like, oh, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it, I'm get it. Then I was talking with Dave. Dave tells me not Dave, um Steve tells me he goes, Well, I wrote it said screw it tore it up went to sleep woke up at four wrote it tore it up went back to sleep woke up at six wrote it said this is gonna have to work because i gotta be there at eight <laughs> i was like hey. a lot of people know people a lot of people did it so how did you i mean how did it work for you was it was it easy did you get i got this story whooped did it stress you a little or or did you just it was, whip it out it was fun to have they handed us a thing a thing to write yeah. the story about so that was kind of fun to have a prompt I've written stories that quickly before, but not a ton. So there's a little bit of pressure, but it was something I was fairly comfortable with. There are some other people who were stressing. Oh yeah, that's a, well, no. When they she, no, they give them anything. It could be a thimble, dude. I'm telling you, y'all don't know what the hell you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Just I went to um, last year. I, I sat in on what's her name's course, where she gave you they she gave you a, a set of papers. And each one had a list of things on it. And you just check, 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 and then you could write from that. And then she would give you like a piece of cloth and something else to help you along with the story. It was a very interesting way to write a story because it was kind of like let, showing you how to do it in steps. Um, it was it was definitely, it helped me understand. For these people who've been writing for a long time, probably didn't matter. But for me, it actually did. Um, what was that, Chris? Well, no, that's what we were talking about, the 24-hour story. So Barbara just whooped it out. And, uh, well, you know, it's funny about some of the 24 hour stories. They've actually been sold. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, some of them have been sold guys. Yeah, well, you never know when, when you're writing, what's going to take off. Um, I wish that, you know, if we all had a magic ball, it'd be different because Barbara would say, okay, I'm writing this and a little magic ball goes up. Eh, 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 oh shit. And then she's writing this. It's going beep, beep, beep. You're like, oh, you're just writing away. Uh, well, we wish we all had one of those. I need one of those. Hell. You never know what I'm going to say on media. So, well, I know uh, Denise, you you watched the Friday Night Show, and I can be a handful, uh, especially when all my hosts are rat antagonizing me. Well, we, we're not going to talk about that here because it's not the show's fault. But yes, uh, I'm not happy with any of the political situations in the country, right? And for that matter, on freaking planet, and it's making everybody I know angry. And um, being an empath, it makes me aggravated. So, no, I, I, I'm I'm used to people when you walk in this store being friendly. I, come on, guys! I live in the deep south where everybody's nice. I mean, we still hold doors open for people, whether you're male or female. Um, I mean, that chivalry is not dead in the south. It, it just people just. It's like how can I explain this? It's 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 like it's right under the surface. All it takes is like a, and somebody just gets angry. Barbara sees that smile at me and she's going to smack somebody upside the damn head. You don't leave her alone. She she probably got some nunchucks over there. It's uh, what do you, what do you mean? In my car. 
<laughs> my car. <laughs> the border in my car. <laughs> yes. Hey, you got to protect yourself these days. No, no, she's really nice. Actually, she should. She, 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 she not. She, it's not that she can't protect herself, but she is really a nice woman. And uh, I take martial arts, so there's a. I have swords for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I have swords too. You know what? I brought one to uh, Emily this year. I brought a little baby one about. Nice. And uh, yeah, I have a nice collection. I think I have fourteen on the wall right now. And uh, t- did I take? Yes, in private school, I did take form. Home. But it's not the same thing because these are samurai swords, and I, I learned with a foil, which is a whole different thing. Well, guys, let me. I'm not going to say this without offending anybody. Um, the, what I was taking in, in private school is foil fighting. It's, it's just a little thin French foil. Um, you know, it's probably about yay big around. It's about, probably about, about as long as a saber is, and uh, it's a different kind of fighting because it's a very light weapon. And it's a different kind of stance. Samurai swords, I and mean, you can't use that way. You have to use them a different way. It's more samurais are more like using nunchucks, to be honest with you. <laughs> it really is. Katanas, I mean, whatever you want to use. Well, remember, Chinese and Japanese swords are not exactly the same. So don't forget that, or you'll embarrass yourself if you're talking to somebody who knows about swords. I know everybody always thinks that that when you see the sword that the Highlanders got, you know, which country does it actually come from? No, I actually got a replica of that. Yes, I did. Well, I have the three. I have it comes with the long one, the middle one, and the short one. Actually, I, I can't think of the names right now, but the ones for Harry Carey, the middle ones, in case you were bad and you have to go, you rip it out <laughs> and kill yourself. No, we're Americans. We don't do that kind of stuff. You know, it's funny. I was talking to a friend of mine, and uh, she was telling me about She's from Japan. She's telling me about uh, the Japanese beef over there. I'm like, yes, yeah, it's, it's good. She said, well, you know, J- Japanese people eat raw fish and raw meat, raw steak. I said, so do Americans. She said, really? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I said, we have this thing called tartare. I said, matter of fact, at the last gala I attended, they actually were serving raw steak. And I said, and, and, uh, sushi is all over our country. I'm, no, Jack, I'm not a big fan of raw fish. Even though I live in the South, I like fish. Maybe Miss Barbara is, but I'm not. Yeah. Love sushi. So see, I told you. See, that's that's why she got them super pals. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people like sushi. Mm-hmm. Write a book about sushi. See, you should be glad you're like on the other side of the country where she can't just reach over and go. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. I bet your husband said, no, baby, don't smack me. Well, maybe her wife says that. <laughs> Don't ask me these kind of questions. Because, look, to be honest with you, Kimberly, um, this is, and I'm going to say this for the last time, I don't really care. It's not important. You forget I'm from New Orleans. Have you ever been to New Orleans? Every debauchery you can think of is in New Orleans. It makes Vegas look like Kitty City. Um, yeah, I hate it. No, I've been to both. <laughs> what I'm telling you, it makes it look like Kitty City. It doesn't. It was a nasty, dirty, French style city. That if it's if it's debauchery of some sort, it's there. So, well, just to put it in perspective, when we're kids, and even our kids and their kids and their grandkids go riding down Bourbon Street, where half the people is nude anyway. So, somebody says. Oh, you get offended because you've seen boobies? No, because we've seen seeing them as kids. This is a natural thing to us. We don't even think about it. Uh, it's just part of living here. It is It is a city that you got to be careful in. If your cover come down here, uh, I always tell people traveling groups, especially if you're going to go outside of the city itself or outside of, the, of um, one of the garden districts, you know, make sure you, you – because New Orleans is strange. You go from being in a beautiful, luxury city and two blocks later you're in the hood. Uh, and you better be carrying a gun because I'm like, oh, rape you or shoot you or kill you or one or the other. It's, it's, a da- it's a dangerous city. It's like Chicago. It's dangerous. It's beautiful and dangerous, like most women. Beautiful and dangerous. Mm. I don't know what to tell y'all. No, but really, again, if you come down here, you know, find a local. It's always best to be on a local. Anytime I travel, I always try to find someone local. Being on the internet now, doing radio, I got a lot of friends in a lot of states now. So I'll call them and say, hey, you know, where's the best place to go eat? Where's the best place to go have a drink? Where's the best club to go to? Where's the pub? Whatever it may be I'm interested in. And at least that way I'm, I'm, I'm getting to see the best parts from a local point of view and not the tourist parts. And that's the other thing about New Orleans. 
When you get in New Orleans, stay away from the river. Everything in the river is a, is a tourist trap. It's expensive and the food's not as good. Go into the quarter a little bit. Prices go down some and the food goes way up. Friendly, friendly. Yeah, it has nothing to do with being an author. No. But on the side note, there is something to do with author. If you're in the in the uh, in the French Square, in the in the square uh, where the church is, where the St. Louis Cathedral is, if you're in that square, lots of authors sit there and write, lots of artists sit there and draw, and lots of um, tarot readers sit there and read cards. It seems to be a very good place for it. Now you see authors all over the place just sitting back chilling. Right, chilling, thinking, no, God, because that's that's 400 years old, right? There's no telling what you're thinking while you're sitting there. It's a good place to sit there. You ever, do you ever do that, Barbara? Just go somewhere and write, or you just write at home? or Everything. Home, yeah. out somewhere. I'm calling you, by the way, when we come down to New Orleans. Oh, just, yeah, I'll, test me. I'll take you on and show you all the good stuff. It's, uh, it's before <laughs> Emily goes, she leaves. She goes, I, I'm not, we're not friends anymore. I'm like, why? <laughs> she said, I gained five pounds hanging out with you. Five <laughs> and you know she's only this big to start off with. Yeah, so. she's tiny. Yeah, she's tiny. No, we're talking about Emily Good. No, see, see, I can gain five pounds. You won't even notice. I lose. See, I, I don't lost fifteen pounds since last time I seen them, and you still won't notice. There'll be another twenty before anybody does. But, but you know, the little tiny people, man, they gain two pounds. And, and a good friend of mine got herself in trouble because we were at the bank. And had this little tiny girl that works in there. She's like four eleven, maybe ninety pounds. And uh, we come in there one day, and she looked like she'd been out partying all week. And she walks up, and he says, oh, you're pregnant? I thought this little girl going to come across the counter and whoop his ass. <laughs> I said, why didn't you ask her that? Well, she had a little pooch. I said, you never stop to think that maybe she might have been eating. I mean, the girl has no no body fat on her at all. I mean, she, two hamburgers, she's going to be pouching out. Oh, God, I never thought of that. <laughs> I was like, you're a dumbass. <laughs> uh, see, guys. Think before you open your mouth. No, I don't have to because I'm a radio show host, but y'all have to. <laughs> no, y'all really do. Uh, any emails you want to give out or anything where they can find you at? So, so uh, come say, I love you, Barbara. <laughs> you can find me on my website, barbaralunds.com. It's uh, a contact form and everything. No, actually, she, if you ever get a chance to meet her, she's a very nice lady. She's very intelligent and she's very nice. Not used to talking for two hours, so that's for sure. Joe, yes, yes yeah. me, no. Well, I feel in the blanks. I don't feel bad. It's, uh, no, she's, she, no, actually, she, um, the first interview her and I did, I think it was about 25 minutes, and uh, she was really good. And we, uh, maybe a little bit longer than that, but we, we talked about several things that we actually didn't talk about tonight. And uh, go look at the interview, and you'll t see why I warned you about being nice to her. <laughs> <laughs> No, you should be always nice because she's a lady. You should always be nice to a woman. But I, and, and anyway, on the other side, she's one that can actually kick your ass. So you should be even extra nice. Hmm. Oh, John, you're such a freak. No, dude, we're getting ready to leave out of here. If you got a serious question, ask me. But that was just drunken stupidity or something there. Uh, who is this? Friends, Francisco? Francisco? I can't even pronounce that. Friends. You threw an L in and that just completely threw me off. Anyway, where are you at? You live in France along the Mediterranean near a town I have never heard of. Okay, well, what's your question? Oh, so you're telling her to come down and write in the Mediterranean? Well, I'll tell okay. you what. If you're serious, email her. Tell her where you live. And when she gets to the Mediterranean, she can come sit in your little villa down in and sit on the Mediterranean. Shit, for that matter, I'll come right on the Mediterranean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Well, I'll come. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, part of my DNA says Mediterranean in it. Yes, it's it's like thirty six percent Italian, uh, thirty eight percent Scottish, Irish, Welsh, English. Yes, I got all those confrontational kind of. <laughs> well, actually, when you hear when you hear somebody say Scottish, Welsh, Irish, and that's Viking is what that is. Yes. So when you follow the ancestry line back, that's what it actually is, because the Vikings came and lay long and basically raped and pillaged through that whole section there. Yeah, I don't think anybody who lives in England isn't part Viking. Yeah, they did a lot of raping and pillaging back in the day. I didn't. I didn't actually realize I was um, doing a doing a report on on the DNA thing, and it was going backwards. And I was like, Jesus, they spent a lot of time in those areas, a lot more than I realized. Yeah, you know. So everybody's got a little Viking in them, a little Italian in them. Yeah, you know. 
Um, what do you mean? No, I didn't make, I thought for sure I was going to be a month. I thought for sure. I fell one short. I was only six, not seven. I know. I was disappointed. Hi, Brad. This <laughs> is whatever. Um, there are some people in the world, though, that are like 98%, whatever the hell they are, especially if they live in South America or, or Africa. Oh, the Europeans and the Asians, even the Asians aren't anymore. Asians are even mixed breeds now. Yeah, it's 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 just the way it is, man. We're becoming, we're truly becoming one world. It's taking some time, but we're truly becoming one world. Why are you asking what color? Oh, Mike wants to know what color eyes you got. Are you being a, oh, I know why. Okay, never mind. That's kind of personal, though. <laughs> you know why? I have questions. Yeah. Those are the person. Well, I know why I was asking it. Um, on They're the, on the, uh, they um, on the blood type studies, they asked they asked the eye the eye chart colors. It, they basically just keep brown, green, and blue, not to get confusing because you know there's so many shades in between. So we just that's just the way to keep it because uh, they found out that uh, Rh negative people, a lot of them tend to have blue or green eyes. And uh, a lot of people who are in power and in music and rock star tend to have blue or green eyes. Well, green eyes are only 2% of the world's population and blue is only 8 But yet they seem to control the damn planet. They're taking over people. They're freaking mutants. I'm telling y'all. And it's, what's, that's another weird thing. Rh negative is a mutation. And so is green and blue eyes. Brown eyes, on the other hand, is a natural color of our human race. I don't think people realize, but for like a million years or 500,000 years, however long, we were brown haired, brown skin, and brown eyed. It was nothing else, just that. And then somewhere, 38,000 years ago, God, alien, a guy had decided to interject some new blood into the family, and boom, <laughs> we, we, we became mutants. No, I'm serious. Nothing I'm saying is a lie, people. It's like when people, my religious people get upset with me because I was, I was doing a lecture. And uh, the guy asked me, he said, well, I've heard you say we all have a reptilian section in our brain. I said, yes, we do. Oh, Joe, that's that's sin, and you can't say that. You're going to go to hell. I said, no, that's a fact. It's not a sin. It's a fact. I said, I said and without it, you would be some little wussy that wouldn't even, even challenge anything. I said, it's not what makes us aggressive, though. I said, it's not what it actually does. Said, no, no. I said, you know what? While I'm chatting, while I'm doing a lecture, get on your phone and go, and type in reptilian section in human brain, and you can ask the question after you read it. <laughs> he left after he read the phone. It's a uh, well, people. I didn't create you. What does that mean? You mean why does that make God a reptilian? We didn't say your whole brain was reptile. We said there was a piece. Well, maybe God was creating y'all, and he was short a little piece, so he ripped in a reptilian. Say, I'll just take it from reptilian, stick it in there. What the hell do I know? Really. And by the way, don't put limitations on the creator and stop bugging Jesus. I mean, Lord, people. How many 2,000 years y'all been aggravating this man? If I was him, I'd have just said, half the planet would be gone now. I'm just see y'all lucky, man. See how lucky y'all really are? No, I get I get furious when people put limitations on the creator. Y'all are fine. He created the universe, and she created the, the universe, created the world, created earth, created you, everything. But then, as you say, there's anybody else out there? Oh no, well, no, that's not true. Well, why are you just put limitations on the Creator? Don't do that. I'm sure there's a special hell for people like y'all. Mm -hmm. It's called Arthur's hell, <laughs> where you have Arthur's block the rest of your life. Purgatory. That's where you'd be. Arthur's block and purgatory. I'm evil. I know I am. Yes, I am. Anyway, Barbara, you've been a sweetheart putting up with me tonight. It's um, any plans on me anywhere in the future? Just working hard or? Let me, know you, let me know when you're out and about. Oh, there is a there is a festival down near you, by the way, that I have got to go to. Well, it's come on down. Little funky Rougarou festival. So Ooh, that even sounds even better. <laughs> well, there's lots of little festivals like that, and they're usually the ones that turn out to be really good. The, the, the crowds aren't near as big, the people are nicer, they're more compact. There's a lot more stuff that goes on. So uh, we'll do that next year. Yes, well, just keep me informed because I'll, you know, I'll show you around. There's a lot of great places to stay, and um, and and if you, so, a lot of things you can do down here. You can just stay in the quarter and never leave. 
you don't need a rental car then. If you stay in the suburbs, you got to have a rental car to get around in. But, um, well, Johnny, the, the the prices in the suburbs are usually half of what they are in the city, depending on the year. If it's if it's not it's not a Mardi Gras time or summer's a little different. Summer's weird for us. Sometimes it's real cheap. Sometimes it's not. We get a lot of snowbirds come down here in the summertime for some reason. We get a lot that come down in the wintertime. I don't know. They're just trying to escape being a Yankee. That's all. <laughs> no, she's not a Yankee. She lives in Utah. She got to live east of the Mississippi River to be a Yankee, my friend. <laughs> Worse. Uh, Utah's great, man. She's a Mormon. That's all. They're a little strange, but Was. they're. Um, what do you mean, doing? No, you know what? Before we go, I'll, I'll tell you this, and then I'll bring this up on, on the Wednesday show. Um, when I was there the second time, I met a gentleman, uh, and he was pretty good ways up in the church. And I had asked him because I have a fascination with religions that maybe think of outer space or going to other worlds or, or aliens that are involved, which they have pretty much all of that involved in their religion in some form of fashion. But I noticed they're like some of the other religions, like Scientology, and then it's so far up the realm that it's hard to find out what the hell it actually is. Um, so they don't think they're from here. What the hell is that? How, you're raised on this planet, and you now you're you're a religion saying, I'm not from this planet, people. Y'all effed up. We're going home. Well, we're going to the new world. We ain't getting the hell out of here. Um, there's actually quite a lot of writing about it, ladies and gentlemen. It's it's in, but most of it's gonna be interpretative because you can't really get the church to talk about it. You have to be in the church and somewhere up in it. I, I just have a gift for gab, so people just tell me stuff to shut me up. But um no, really, they do, and it's it's uh, it, it was interesting conversations, all I can say. But we're gonna let Miss Barbara get out of here. She's something about she got to go beat the kids and feed the dog or something. I don't know. Uh, no, sorry, beat the kids and feed feed the, the boss. And uh, what do you mean, who's the boss? I know, being an ass. Again, thank you for hanging out with us tonight. I had a great time. Uh, everybody, if you get any moans, groans, bitches, and complaints, you know the rule. Write to Michelle DeRoche. She always likes hearing from y'all. She's not going to bitch at me. She's going to bitch at Joe. That's why you're going to write to her. She said, you better leave Joe alone. <laughs> that's how it's going to be. I'm telling you now. Um, if you're looking for a show, that's also who you write to is Michelle DeRoche. Uh, I don't know if there's any free slots left. There might be one or two, but most of them now are paid positions or they offer you to pay to be on Prime or to pay to be on the features list, stuff like that. So you can always, but you need to talk to Michelle about that. She handles all of that now. I don't, I don't even know what the schedules are anymore. She does all of that. Thank God for her, man. Because uh, you people would drive me crazy otherwise. On that note, I want to tell everyone good night and stay tuned for the. There's an episode of the Gray Zone coming up next. Uh, matter of fact, I think it is on ancient religion. So that ought to just make y'all good and crazy. Until next week, until until I'm not back on until Wednesday. Until Wednesday, y'all have a good time and stay out of trouble. Uh, be sure to check out Miss Barbers. Find her when you can. Uh, go buy a book, people. Be nice. Um, yes, just go over. They, can, can they get them anywhere? I got to go to your website. No, anywhere. Amazon, so, Barnes Noble. Yeah. So you can go anywhere and get them. Buy, don't be cheesy, but again, it's Christmas time. Buy a book. <laughs> And these books, they looked interesting. And the other one, the little, the, the anthology looks kind of cool too. So see, remember people, anthologies are multiple stories. It's not just one story. I know Denise, you've been asking me all night what an anthology was. I just told you. It's more than one story. It's not the same story. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought, you, come on guys. I've talked about anthologies a hundred times on this, oh, on, the, on, on the other show. On that night, good night, good afternoon. Enjoy yourself around the world to our friends in London. Uh, I know it's nice to be able to listen to us early before bedtime or before the a.m. hours. So I'm sure y'all are enjoying it. Uh, to Geronimo, yes. Um, you'll have to talk to Carmen. He's doing all the booking for guests, but I will get you his his number, and you can get in touch with him. I know I, I know. Um, I can't – yeah, no, I've seen you made the New York's bestseller list. I know. I know you don't have to brag. I know all about it. Um, but on that note, we'll see everybody next week. And enjoy – and we forget. It's the holidays. Have some damn fun. Spread some joy and cheer around, people. Walk around, give around some Snickers bars or something, man. Do something. Be nice. Uh, good night, everybody.